Good morning, everybody, and greetings from Epiphany Church in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. Today, we're going to start at the super macro universal, like world news, and then we're going to finish with the local news. It's going to be like a blended broadcast where the international, then national, and then local news are all in the same eight minutes. Let's start big. I bet everybody watching today knows that there's going to be an election, whatever that is, uh, six weeks from now, roughly, here in the United States. And because the United States is one of the biggest and most militarily and politically powerful countries on Earth, arguably the biggest, it matters to everybody, elections. And let me hit you to a really cool thing that you can do, and you can teach your friends and family to do, too, so that you can have the peace of God through and beyond this election cycle and your entire lives. Bet I've got your attention. One is to be not afraid as God and God's messengers constantly say to us. And then something more specific, you think, well, that sounds good, be not afraid, but I'm still afraid. How do I get rid of the fear, Chris? I've got an answer for you. Keep doing it till it works. Pray the first several words of the Lord's Prayer. Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Now, it sounds like a request, and it is. God, perfect God. God that is beyond my any and every comprehension, the God I only glimpse at as through a lens darkly, that God of wonder. I hope your will is done. Yes, it's a request. You're saying, make sure your will is done. But here's what happens when you pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done a lot, and you pray it with faith and fervency, is you start to understand that in some ways, everything that occurs is ultimately going to be the will of God. Now, you say, was it God's will that all those millions of people got burnt at Auschwitz? Short answer, no. Can God redeem it and ultimately make it the case that God's will is done? Yes, and that matters more. The big picture matters more than the little pictures. As Rick O'Brien often says, you might be miserable for a night, but come the morning comes the joy. The tears will end. Now, there was an election cycle four years ago in the same very country. As a pastor, and particularly a pastor that because of one video I shot, I have sort of a ministry that's in a lot of places with a lot of people. And after Election Day, I was contacted by folks from the United States and from lots of other countries saying, what on earth just happened? And I'd say, you know, I really don't know. I'm, I'm kind of surprised, too, by the election. But let me tell you something that no one else is going to tell you. I actually believe that the occurrences of this last election were weirdly the will of God. Sometimes there's things we don't understand, but we can know that it will make sense, and in God's perspective, it's already making sense. Now, I'll just give you one little detail. One thing that even occurred to me four years ago is when, and I knew this way before four years ago, I knew it from personal experience, and I know it from talking to a zillion church members and people in trusted conversations. I've noticed that a lot of people say something similar to this. When you want something really badly, for all the wrong reasons, you never get it. And one of the people running four years ago wanted the presidency really badly in all the wrong ways, I thought, psychologically. And it just was almost impossible for that person to win. Well, there's only one other person to vote for then. There, there were only two choices. This is not a multi-party sophisticated country. Probably never will be. So anyway, the, the bigger point here is, think about the possibility. Was the will of God actually done? 
I say yes, and ultimately always is. Now, it's 2020, this November is coming, a vote will occur. I already know that the will of God will be done. I pray it all the time, and people of faith pray it all the time. And then they're guided also. It's, we also don't just pray, oh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Now sit and watch TV all day and eat Cheetos. No, because if you're praying, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, you invest yourself in that kingdom bringing. You invest yourself more and more completely in the perfect, miraculous, beautiful, justice-filled will of God. You say, I'm going to be part of that will of God. I'm going to go work hard for my candidate. I'm going to knock on doors and say, vote. My party, my man is, is the best bet. And here's why I think so. And share your opinion so that you know when November comes, you've done all you could to do your best at enacting the will of God. And then be smart enough to understand that come November, if an event happens that was not your first choice, that you think, ugh, this is hideous. Now the world's gonna come to an end or the world's going to continue to go to an end, depending on your politics. But that's basically the two positions boiled down. We can elevate that, folks. We can say, no, God is in charge. I'm going to continue being a citizen of God's kingdom. And don't ever confuse God's kingdom for one of 198 countries on earth. That's absolutely ill-advised. God loves all 198 countries equally. God loves all 7.3 billion of us equally. God would see justice for all of us. And we know all this, again, when we pray, Father, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Okay, that's enough for the international news. Pray that you're going to be filled with peace. People will be calling you and going, hey, why do I see so much peace and calm in you? Don't you realize the world's going to come to an end? And you can be the smart one then. You can be the pastor. You can say, no, the world is not coming to an end. Chill. Calm down. And even then, keep praying. Teach them the Lord's Prayer. Give them something of value in a world so filled with valueless junk. Give everybody you know the gift of the Lord's Prayer. Now, speaking of the Lord's Prayer, that I believe is one of the highlights. Come on, I'm lying. It's the highlight of every Christian service and every Episcopal service because we always pray it at the zenith point of our Eucharist or communion or mass. Choose your favorite word. And here, the reason I'm walking around, this very space right here will be where we at 8 a.m. this Sunday conduct an outdoor service. Yes, the Epiphany Episcopal Church is back in business. They decided that the day they could open the bars, closed spaces to cigarette smoking, drinking people, it was finally safe enough have outdoor services here. So I'm not going to complain. I'm going to rejoice and conduct that service two days from now, 8 a.m. right here. And you are welcome and encouraged to attend. Here's what you do. You bring a folding chair or you bring strong enough muscles to help us carry the folding chairs from the church building. You see this patio is enormous. And at 8 a.m. on Sunday, It'll be like now, but even a greater angle here. There'll be all this shaded space. It will be roughly 75 degrees, between 75 and 80, very likely. It almost never rains here. We're not worrying about that. It will be easy to socially distance our masked selves and avail ourselves of all the Purell bottles that'll be around. And please bring your own too. There can never be too much Purell. We'll have the service right out here. It will be, let's get to all the details. There will be no singing, there will be um, no music, but it'll be just like the regular 8 a.m. service that we've had for years and years at Epiphany, a spoken Eucharist, a spoken service with a spoken liturgy, and then communion will be distributed in bread only. Now, how about the rest of the morning, you ask? I'll tell you. At 10 a.m., we'll go in to this very church building 
and do exactly like we do every week. We'll have our live stream service at 10 a.m. That takes about 35, 40 minutes. And by the way, just a reminder, I never preach the same sermon twice. So you think, hmm, that service outside sounds kind of fun. But I've gotten used to six months of drinking coffee on my couch and then hearing the beautiful music that Kathy Steinbrenner plays and singing a few hymns at home. You can still do that. And if you do, you won't think, oh, now i got to listen to the same sermon twice because I always preach something different. So that's something you can know if you double attend at 8 and 10, as actually quite a few of our members do. Let me see, am I remembering everything else? Oh, yes. The most important thing in the future, we're back in business this Sunday, but on October 4th, in this same courtyard, we'll be blessing the animals. And that service will be at 4 p.m. on Sunday, October 4th, which very likely will follow, uh, likely, positively will follow a morning, like we're, the morning we're having two days from now. 8 a.m. outdoor service, 10 a.m. indoor service that's live streamed, and then in the afternoon, we're going to have a socially distanced, well-masked, hand sanitized blessing of the animals followed by a picnic. Remember, we can all wave at each other. We don't have to handshake. And this can be 111% safe for your health and get your pets blessed. Now, let's end with the international too. Epiphany is very aware that we now have viewers everywhere and we want to offer pet blessings to all your pets too. Please know with faithful confidence that if you send a text with a picture of your cat or dog or snake or hamster, that we will earnestly and lovingly and faithfully pray for that animal in gratitude for that animal on October 4th, right on the spot as virtual reality here. So let everybody you know, let your friends in Italy know they want their pet blessed. All they got to do is know how to take a picture of that pet and email or text it to somebody here at Epiphany. Pretty easy, right? Okay, that's all the news that's uh, fit to share. May God richly and wonderfully bless you and may you bless yourself and your loved ones and your community and your universe by regularly praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Ooh, that feels good. All right, God bless you. Bye-bye.